So you're looking for an effective way to blast away that belly fat. And you don't want to waste your time on things that don't work so you can get this done as fast as possible. Unfortunately, there are a lot of quick fixes all over the internet that just don't deliver the results that they promise. So today, I want to give you nine tips to lose that belly fat based on science. These are steps that scientists recommend you can take so you can reduce your belly fat over time. The first step is to concentrate on burning fat from your whole body rather than just your belly. I know it may sound counterintuitive, but this is the best way to burn belly fat. Most studies have completely debunked spot reduction or target fat burning. One study looked at the effectiveness of losing fat from one of your arms. 104 participants were required to take part in a weight training program designed to target their non-dominant arm. After 12 weeks, researchers came to the conclusion that even though participants did lose some fat, they lost fat from their whole body, not just the trained arm. Similar studies like this were performed to test if you can target the abdominal region as well. 40 overweight and obese participants stuck to an ab-specific weight training routine for 12 weeks, but experienced no extra fat loss from their belly when compared to dieting alone. Even though there are a few studies that have reported results that showed that you can target fat burn in certain situations, this was usually attributed to either flaws in the study or due to the fact that a very small amount of people were studied in general. Overall, the majority of the scientific evidence is heavily stacked against the idea of spot reduction. So get the idea of target fat burning and spot reduction out of your head. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that we can't burn belly fat with things like weight training. It just means that we can't isolate and burn only belly fat without also burning the fat from other areas of the body. So that brings me right to the next step that science recommends we take to burn belly fat and keep it off over time, and that's weight training. There are many studies comparing weight training to cardio for fat loss, and most studies show that cardio will burn more calories and more fat on a minute by minute basis when compared with weight training. Unfortunately, most of these studies usually last for a couple weeks or months at the most. The participants and the changes to their bodies aren't observed for a very long period of time. However, one study known as the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study was done over a 12-year period between 1996 and 2008. This study also involved a huge amount of participants. Over 10,500 men over 40 years old took part and they were each divided into one of four groups. Each group either increased the amount of time spent either weight training, doing aerobic activity, yard work, or being sedentary. And it turns out that the weight training group had the least gain in their waistline over time. Now I have to say that these results may have been totally different if it involved 20 year old men instead of 40 year old men. As we age, we lose muscle mass and muscle is metabolically active tissue. Also, if you aren't currently doing some form of strength training, by starting a heavy weight training program, you could increase the protein turnover in all your muscles, increasing your basal metabolic rate by 7%. This was demonstrated in a study conducted at the University of Maryland in which subjects performed progressive resistance training for only 30 minutes, three days per week for 16 weeks. After the 16 weeks, the subjects added on about three and a half pounds of muscle and lost about 4.3 pounds of fat, even though they weren't restricting calories. Also, their metabolic rates increased by an average of 7.7%. The bottom line is that weight training is the best way to prevent the loss of muscle as we age. And to increase our resting metabolism, weight training is by far the best. So this may be one reason why the weight training group did so well in the other 12 year long study that I just spoke about. Regardless, researchers conclude that both weight training and cardio can be very useful at managing belly fat over time. Which brings us right to the next step you can take, and that's cardio. Cardio may not increase your metabolism the way that heavy weight training will, but when you do cardio correctly, you can burn significantly more calories per minute than with a weight training program. This is especially true with different forms of cardio like high intensity interval training. One study compared HIIT, weight training, running, and biking. Each activity was performed for 30 minutes and researchers found that HIIT burned 25-30% to 30 more calories than the other forms of exercise. 25% is a significant amount of extra calories, so if you want the most reward for your tough cardio sessions, try to incorporate a couple days of high intensity interval training every week. Next, let's talk about diet. This really should have been the very first step because without a proper diet plan, 
You can do all the cardio and weight training you want, but you'll still struggle with that excess belly fat. There are a lot of people that immediately recommend that you cut carbs to lose fat in the shortest amount of time. Cutting carbs can be a very efficient, fast way to lower insulin levels, lower overall calories, and burn fat fast. However, if you can't stick to a low carb diet comfortably, in which you would average roughly under 50 grams of carbs per day, then starting a low carb diet may not be the right move for you. There seems to be an endless debate in the fitness industry about whether a low carb diet or a low fat diet is more efficient at burning fat. However, the true determining factor that makes a diet plan efficient is if the person on the plan can stick to it consistently. A study involving over 600 people proved that adherence was the key to a successful diet plan. The 600 people were divided between two groups, low carb and low fat, and almost everything else remained identical. After a year, researchers found that some people in each group lost a lot of weight, others lost a little bit of weight, and some even gained some weight. But both charts for the weight loss in the low fat group and the low carb group matched almost identically. This was because some people were able to stick to a low fat diet with no problems. Others couldn't stick to it at all. The same thing happened in the low carb group. The point is that you shouldn't look for the best diet plan in the world because there is no such thing. You should start by thinking about what whole single ingredient foods you enjoy eating and then begin setting up a diet plan from there. If you love carbs, it's very unlikely that a low carb diet will work for you in the long run. And consistency is key here, so it's worth spending some time finding a plan that actually suits your preferences and lifestyle. Regardless of what diet plan you're on, it's critical that you don't feel like you're constantly starving. And you can satisfy your hunger very effectively by increasing fiber in your diet. This step is important because it allows you to feel full. Insoluble fiber coming from vegetables is especially good at filling your stomach up and soluble fiber will slow the digestion of what you eat, helping you feel full for longer. Some studies also point out that fiber may decrease the amount of calories absorbed from what you actually eat. Also, by feeling full, you'll obviously eat less. One study of over 1,100 people showed that for every 10 gram increase in soluble fiber, belly fat gain decreased by 3.7% over a five year period. A couple examples of soluble fiber include things like avocados, Brussels sprouts, and legumes. Another thing that can help increase fullness is our next science-based tip to help you reduce belly fat, which is incorporating more protein into your diet. Diets high in protein don't only help you feel full, but studies also show that they can help increase energy expenditure during digestion. This is largely due to the thermogenic effect of foods as well as gluconogenesis. One study also showed that people that eat more high quality protein sources will also have less belly fat. Depending on how you set up your diet plan, by keeping your protein intake somewhere between 20 to 40% of your total daily calories, you'll be able to experience these great benefits. Now the exact opposite of protein and fiber as they relate to your appetite and reducing belly fat is sugar. So our next step is to ensure that we cut out as much sugar as possible from our diet. Sugar is calorically dense but empty of nutrients. Instead of filling you up, it makes you crave more. It can also be hidden in all sorts of different foods as well as different drinks and beverages. Many studies have shown that eating too much sugar can lead to an increased fat accumulation around the belly. Sugar is also a sure way to spike your insulin levels, decrease insulin sensitivity, and cause insulin resistance, all making it more difficult to keep belly fat off. Get sugar out of your diet and be especially cautious of sweetened drinks because this is an easy way to jack up your daily calories as well as insulin levels without even realizing it. Sugar isn't the only thing you want to decrease to lose belly fat. You also want to limit alcohol consumption. Studies show that increased alcohol consumption is related to abdominal obesity. This is due to a number of different reasons. First is the fact that alcohol itself has calories. The second reason is because it increases your appetite and causes you to make very poor decisions with what you choose to actually eat. Studies that only compare alcohol consumption and belly fat are slightly flawed because they don't take into account that people that drink high amounts of alcohol may not care enough to have a proper diet or exercise plan. The bottom line is, if you do choose to grab a couple drinks, go for lower calorie options like vodka with club soda, and also, don't drink so much that you can't prevent yourself from binging out on junk food. The last step is to decrease stress levels, and I know that that's a lot easier said than done, but stress has been shown to increase cortisol levels, and high cortisol levels have been shown in studies to increase appetite 
and again, abdominal obesity. To decrease stress, the number one thing that I recommend is to remember to not worry about things that happen that are outside of your control. Applying this shift in perspective to your life alone will greatly help decrease stress levels. You should also aim to get eight to nine hours of sleep per night, and you can also try meditation. That's it guys, I really hope this video has helped you out. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I release more free content just like this to help you lose weight and body fat. And if you're really serious about losing that belly fat and you wanna try a done for you approach that involves no research nor trial and error on your part, try my six week challenge. Almost all my clients that have completed this challenge have lost either a minimum of 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only six weeks. You get a custom diet plan, a 42 day workout plan, an accountability coach that'll check in on you every week and much more. This challenge is especially great for those of you that are gonna take your goals very seriously and actually commit to sticking to the program for all 42 days because we give you the opportunity to get the whole program for free while motivating you to actually complete it all the way through. To find out more, you can click the link somewhere around here or you could visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon. Pump it.